Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we've got something a little bit different and uh, this is you know, this one was first started out doing. And today we've got this source, open source racing drone frame. And this is actually a literally it's an open source, it's a, the mini quad or racing quad community. Yeah, I'm just gonna read it from this bit here. Is an international, let's see if I get that better for you, is an international community made up of people just like you who, for whatever reason, wanted to fly a quadcopter or drone. So they set out to learn how to do that, and with their help, you'll be able to do the same. Brilliant. I buy this locally in this country. Uh, for you guys in America, a place like that, you can go straight to team-blacksheet.com. I'm not affiliated or anything like that. I just think that they produce great stuff. And, um, and so I tend to use quite a lot of their stuff. Uh, so the frame, the drone frame serves as a platform to put your equipment on. The sort of series of frames was designed for, for several specialized applications designed by the community. The frame is donated to the community to empower creators and makers and integrate best practices and current trends faster into the continuing manufactured product. In return, it allows the local distribution network to have, uh, to have cheap and direct access to a good frame to compete in a increasingly competitive market, to compete in an increasingly competitive marketplace. There you can go to a Facebook groups, Black Sheep Lounge to discuss if you wish. And uh, there we go, this is a TBS Avian, uh, Avian it's co.uk, Hong Kong, and this, uh, you know, I, I, I do realise they were in Hong Kong before, um, you know. Um, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I live in a free and open society, but I've got to be very careful about what I say. Yeah. Never mind. So, this one is actually, um, is 143, it says. Uh, grams but this is for the five inch arms this is seven inch I've gone for a seven inch uh, because I want this to be a bit of a, a long ranger or something look I, I bought a whole bunch of those hubs and props and I still want to be able to use them um, now these look like they're good five mils or better I'm not sure I don't have a measuring capability Oh, that's not exactly true. I do have a measuring capability. Oh, I can put that, let's say, against that one. Or one where I can actually see where the... There we go. Oh, we can have a little look and see what we got. Yeah, so they're five mil. Oh, maybe six. Uh, six mil. Yeah, six mil. Six mil arms. These are going to be just a couple of mil, I expect. And these... Oh, oh and this is in two pieces. All right, and there's no destructions, of course. <laughs> so it is a figure it out for yourself. Um, this is, <laughs> you know, I don't mind when things are like this. I just uh, would prefer if it was just easier. Ah, there we go. It's, I'm expected to go something like this, or probably more like that, uh, with some other bits and stuff I did now what I want to be able to do is get this out of the plastic and actually weigh it see what it is oh I see maybe I should put that on the chain and wear it around my neck so you starts throwing things at me <laughs> um hey come on we've got to be able to uh, say some things I could probably do all these bags I'm trying to figure out what's what here, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to take all these out and then just chuck them on some scales, just so we can see what the weight of this is. Uh, I won't be able to get it to go under the 250 grams right from the offset. I know that because as soon as I were to put a battery on this, if it is 143 grams with five inch arms, um, that's going to take it pretty much over. But if you want to do any sort of length flying more than two or three minutes. Um, all right, so these have all got cutouts. This is going to be the outside of this will be the um, rubber for where you put your battery, so it gives it a nice purchase there, so it's not from slipping around. So what we want to do now is just put all this onto some scales. 
which I need to find. Here's the scales, and I need the battery. So as you can see, as with all my videos, they are straight off the cuff. Right, and so here we go. Make sure you can see that. I do. Let's tear that in. All right. Now let's get all the big stuff. Don't miss any of this. And I'll put that there. So I'm going to put all the smaller stuff in the middle. And put that there. So we're already on 100 grams. Now let's get the fixings and such. And, uh, all right. Well, this would be interesting if this comes up with 143 grams. And look at that. Bang on, 100. Oh, no, that's for the back of the, uh, that's for the back of this. Uh, so there we go, 143 grams, and that's with the seven inch props. I'll, quickest, I'll stick a quick thing up here where it shows you about, um, it's with the five inch props. We'll do that, because if we see, see the weight down here, it says five inch, right? Five inch, 143.5 grams. So let's, I mean, these are probably not good enough to do 143.5. Uh, there we go, so we got a uh, 320 uh, wheelbase. Middle plate two millimeter, bottom plate two point five millimeter, arm space six millimeter, camera plate two millimeter, the standoff height thirty and twenty two millimeters. All right, arm thickness yeah, so six millimeters, stack mounting thirty point five times thirty point five or twenty times twenty, so you can do the small stuff or the bigger stuff on it. Oh, look, one four four now. I presume that's just going to be because it can't do the point five on these. All right, so that's what we got for our frame. Let's have a little look at the components. Now, I wish I could use what could be suggested as the great stuff to be using on this, but unfortunately, like most of us, I'm tied down to a pretty narrow sort of budget. And um, so I'm gonna be using some things that I had on other stuff. For this particular one, because the frame isn't as heavy, um, I've got another frame. I've got a Impulse Apex. LR Evo, but that's a lot heavier. And so on this one, I'm going to be using these Brother Hobby Return of Threes. I've had these for quite a while and they're great little, um, great little uh, motors. And I do believe that they will be fine for the weight of this frame and the components that I'm gonna be put on them there because I've actually had them running on a heavier frame, but it was with uh, six inch props. We're gonna be running seven inch props off this. So it may be a case of I may only be able to use 3S on them. Um, I actually need to look up actually what I can use on there. I'm pretty sure I can use 4S but with 6 inch, so 3S with 7 inch. Uh, possibly. I'll have to do some double checking on that. I've got a, uh, I've got a choice between a couple of, um, I think this one, actually I think this one could be faulty. I think this one, um, uh, it's been used and abused quite a bit. Uh, but I need to check. I know I had one faulty one and I can't seem to find, I had two of these and I can't seem to find one. So I may have just gotten rid of the faulty one to stop me from keep retrying. This one got pulled off here. So I had to redo all the soldering. I don't know if you can see around that to get it to stay down. But it's going to be a choice of this or this. I do like this because I can pull this off. And um, I can put, I've got an antenna of it with a 90 degree angle on there if that needs to be used. And it's pretty, you know, it's, 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 it's a well-made. I do like these. They're well-made. And I think this is the, um, I think I can put up 36 volts in this. So we can go like, you know, 6S. But I shan't be doing that with the motors I get. So that's for the video transmitter. Possibility I might use this because I like these antennas. They're good for transmit and receive. But I'm more likely, it's got a bit of gain on it, but I'm more likely to go for an antenna really without any gain and so I get a, a nice um, a nice type of uh, thing rather than it be too splayed out because that could mean if that it's rocking about it might be in and out of signal a little tiny bit and then on the receive side of course um, to have decent antennas for reception that's very important in receiving antennas one thing I don't have for this is a receiver as yet 
Now, the reason why I don't have that, I do have a receiver, um, but I've noticed now that TBS have developed receivers which have much better power output of the receiver back to the radio for telemetry. And it's very important that you get to keep your telemetry. So you might find, like I have done before in the past, where you're flying blind for a little bit of time, but as long as that telemetry is on your radio, uh, you know that you're at the right, um, well, this was with a fixed wing, so of course you've got to keep your, your speed if you want to keep your altitude. So you know you're at the right speed, you're at the right altitude, you're in the right heading. And as long as you keep going that way, you're not crashing, and eventually you're going to come out of a bit of a blind spot, your visual blind spot, which I showed, I demonstrated with a 30 second snow, and then came into a nice clear image again. That was a long time ago on a video. If I can find the video, if I go back looking, uh, I'll stick a link to it. All right, now the only thing that I need now is I need some ESCs and I also need a flight controller and some sort of distribution board for those power going to the ESCs. Now you can do this by buying a flash board. Sorry about my chair again. Oh. In my instance here, I'm gonna be using uh, what I've already got. It's got a great little um, 405 um, board on there, which is the Metec 405. I'm not saying this is what you should buy, I'm just saying this is what's on here. And if you can see, it says the STD, right? Which is standard, or whatever that stands for. But what it does for me is, enables me to have enough UART, enough serial connection ports, so I can have a GPS on this, because that's gonna be helpful, right? And um, we can also use the Crossfire protocol because on here you will find there's S bus and F port, which is all right if you're using FreeSky, uh, the S bus ports, but I will need another um, transmit receive UART for my Crossfire protocol. So with that, and then a Crossfire protocol as well for the video transmitter, you know, you can come really unstuck really quickly. Uh, with these things if you don't have enough ports and I do find that these have enough ports to be able to do that as as well as the uh, you know the GPS and I will use these now uh, these are the first <laughs> these are the first ESCs I bought which is quite a while ago um, but they still work and if I'm not going to be using this on this frame I can use these ESCs again to cut the costs down on this build and you know they will just uh, go onto these now even though you know sometimes you have to cross the wires over but the nice thing about these if you use bl heli the software you can program them so that these no matter which way around they are you don't need to cross them around you just get them to work in the, the fashion the neatest that you can have on there and that's all good so there are the components now you may be thinking well why don't you use this receiver with this antenna here um oh, oh. Maybe if I have to, I might do, just to get it going. Again, you need another UART for this. Um, it's using the uh, Crossfire protocol uh, there. I think we may have covered that. I think we did, yes. Um, but again, I mean, that is a great, that is a great receiver. It is a great receiver. And uh, I may use that on this just to get it going. Or I may wait until I get one of these. Uh, one of these TBS Crossfire Nano Pro receivers. And the reason why I like this is because it's TBS Crossfire, it's very small. It will come with another one of these um, antennas, which I really don't need, but it comes with it. As, like, you know, I've just shown you the antenna I've got. The board is tiny, but, uh, but the most intriguing thing for me about it is it's up to, and I believe this will be dynamic change, um, it's up to 500 milliwatts of telemetry output back to the receiver, back to the radio. Which gives me that bonus of, um, of having that information, even if I lose visual through my monitor or goggles. I tend to use a goggle monitor because I can't afford the goggles. Um, but there we go, that's what we got. And of course, this has been on another one, but no, it's got a nice battery strap, which is a... You can call me a fanboy if you like. I am a bit of a fanboy for TBS gear. I'll tell you what, I've only ever had one problem with any TBS gear, and I spoke to them through the website, and then through email there, 
and they quickly came to realize actually there was a bit of a problem with this particular uh, diversity receiver that I had and they expedite it free of charge I had it within days well, I think it was about four or five days tops another one to me and that to me was just first class and I just thought that's that's brilliant I've explained to them the best that the, the problem I've shown them uh, as best as I can and there was no let's wait two months or to and from with this they just got onto it expedited out to me and I thought to myself well this is the reason why even though I know this isn't but this is um uh, this is VAS video uh, video uh, video aerial systems um, so you got all the, the the same guys it's all these saying they're very enthusiastic they are enthusiastic they love doing some really good flights I mean when you see the stuff on their website uh, so you know I, yeah I tend to go for it so I, know, I just know it's going to be good from that from the get-go and I don't have to mess around with firmware or find another components to plug into it to get it to work uh, all this is upgradable updatable over the air which means if I update um, let's say if I update my radio module in the back of my radio which in this instance oh, just get it which in this instance is uh, my trusty Tyrannus here and of course I got my crossfire uh, in there and so when I update this uh, by connecting to my computer and go for the uh, TBS agent I update this and as soon as I turn any of the stuff on that's got power to like these things or the receiver or anything it just it just comes up here update it and you just press the button to update it there's it all for you oh it's brilliant and again for those never had any issues it's always been very good and so I tend to stick with what I know works I'm not trying to advertise I'm just trying to say this is what I use and this is the reason why it's not because it looks great it's because it actually does what I want it to all right so there's the components 